You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. And welcome back. You are listening to WCDB Albany, and this is The Social Workers, a live radio talk show where we talk about social work and related issues affecting your community here in Albany, New York. My name is Eric Hardiman, and I'm co-host with Alyssa Lotmore. Welcome back, Alyssa. Hi, Eric. I'm so excited for this spring season to have been kicking off today. And we have a special guest with us live in the studio today, a former uh, graduate of the School of Social Welfare, Sean Erger, and Alyssa is going to introduce him, but welcome, Sean. Thanks. Great to be here. Well, we're really excited to have Sean here today. He works in the Capital Region, and like Eric said, he's a graduate and alum of the UAlbany School of Social Welfare, which we're very excited about. Um, today, Sean's going to discuss his use of blogging and social media in social work, particularly with the topic of suicide prevention. Uh, Sean will also explain how social media platforms, such as Twitter, can be used for professional development, advocacy, networking, and much more. And you can find out more about Sean after the show or even during the show um, on Twitter, um, Stuck on SW, and at his blog on www.stuckonsocialwork.wordpress.com. Welcome, Sean. Great to be here. Hopefully I got all of that correct, but if not, you can definitely uh, give us some reminders <laughs> yes. during the show on how we can connect with you. So I just want to start off with the first question uh, that we have is, what made your social worker, you are an LCSW, what made you interested in using social media and blogging for the social work profession? Okay. Well, it was uh, kind of a, a long story, but I guess what happened was is I was... Uh, I've become really interested in uh, the therapeutic alliance, that, that whole idea of, you know, uh, are we working towards the same goal and how do we measure what the work that we do and how can we tell that we uh, are doing good work? And uh, so, and I was really interested in the, uh, the use of, uh, of, of self or mainly how what is the therapist's role in, in the therapeutic alliance so I, got, I became really passionate about this and um, I, I thought about uh, I actually pitched a, a, a book um, and the editor that I was working with said hey you know you're just kind of this guy from upstate New York um, you need to maybe kind of up, you know, set yourself apart a bit and uh, she had suggested starting a blog and, and developing a social media presence to hmm. to do that so um and so yeah that's what i started doing i started sharing resources related to that issue specifically and interacting with with folks on social media uh interested in in social work and mental health and um it's kind of uh snowballed from there <laughs> So we always so. talk about um, one thing I always encourage, you know, students to do or, you know, even professionals, you know, that, that's right. We want to have a presence on social media, especially if we're trying to promote or advocate for a certain topic or even try to create our own brand in a way. And what when we think about blogging, how does somebody start a blog just generally? Is, is it something okay. hard, something you need training on? For those listening, if, you, if they're interested in starting a blog, what are sort of the steps to begin that process? I've kind of had to learn on the, on the fly. Um, so that uh, it, it, it's a lot of uh, time in, invested, but um, I, I, I picked it. You can pick up, there's various platforms you can do. The two most popular are uh, Blogspot and, um, and WordPress. Press. I just decided to use WordPress and started playing around with it and putting some content on there and uh, just kind of experimenting with different ways to, to put content on there. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of trial and error for me. I know that there are places you can go to, you know, kind of learn content and how to try to do that. Um, but I, I me, mean, I've just kind of done a lot of trial and error. So. And tell us a, a little bit generally, you know, particularly for an audience that may not be as familiar with social work, but what is the the primary focus of the blog? Uh, so my, my uh, the, good question. <laughs> the, uh, the, so I, I picked the, 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 blo the title stuck on social work because, again, in, in thinking about the therapeutic alliance, I think that there are times when we feel like we're 
uh, as clinicians, sometimes we're stuck and we need help. And uh, so that was kind of the spirit of that uh, was to say, okay, I'm going to blast out some resources that maybe help people get hmm. unstuck <laughs> okay. in, in a case or uh, it started out as, as more the, the, the micro level stuff that's where I kind of that was my primary interest but the more I kind of grew out in, ta- in interacting with people from social work, mental health and health care and, and um, lately I've been really fascinated with health care information technology so the, it kind of like grew from there um, and and who would you say your audience is for the blog generally? Um, I, you know, I, I try to uh, again. I, I, I um, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about a lot, <laughs> I, and I've inter- I've been interested about a lot a lot of things. So it's usually just kind of whatever strikes my my interest. But it's it's geared toward uh, social workers, mm-hmm. mental health. Um, I become really interested in. Um, behavioral health and physical health integration so I try to do a lot of that too um, for people who are interested in in because uh, it's my it's become my belief that mental health care is health care <laughs> so do you uh, have any interest like do you have a favorite post or something that you really um, put a lot of energy <laughs> into or is there something that really stuck out and as you're doing this blog is there something that you really a certain topic or a certain <coughs> post that you really enjoyed uh, writing oh geez there's a lot <laughs> there's or maybe a like lot the of, top two the, I think I'd say that the, the ones that really uh, pop out for me are the ones that really kind of not only I, I like to, to share resources but I like the ones where I've just kind of they've kind of organically grown out of interactions with people on social media um, I'm really active in the, the suicide prevention on social media um, uh uh, community and that's uh, we on Twitter we use the hashtag SPSM um, and one of the one of the times uh, we had a, a, a guest his name was Carl Dunn uh, Jr. he was a he uh, founded a, a chat called the uh, uh, borderline personality disorder chat BPD hmm. chat and um, he w- he was talking about his chat and they offer peer support which is a really awesome uh, thing and so he came on and we started talking about the uh, the use of of language uh, that we as clinicians use to uh, describe uh, borderline personality disorder how sometimes it can be kind of prejudicial and um, kind of pejorative and so um, I, I took some of those tweets and kind of that were in the the Twitter chat as his, uh, from his appearance and put that on my blog and kind of shared that and um, that kind of grew so it was really cool how it was um, and, and he actually uses that on his chat every once in a while too Great. so yeah, it kind of like tells the the story of of kind of how what we were talking about that day, and that's one of my favorites. And yeah. so, so you mentioned the word community. I'm curious, and I get the sense from listening to you speak that there is um, at least some type of informal network of other bloggers that you've connected with, maybe people through Twitter, other uh, social workers, or people interested in social work using social media. Can you mm-hmm. talk a little bit about how you've connected with them and what those connections mean and sort of maybe where you see that heading. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the, the most popular, uh, at least on Twitter, uh, the most the most popular way for social workers to connect is through the, the macro, there's actually a macro social work uh, tweet chat community. Um, they can be found at uh, macro, uh, I believe it's just macro sw.com. Um, and uh, on Twitter, it's of, at uh, official macro sw and they use the hashtag macro sw <laughs> um and that's where you can really find um a, a growing kind of social work community at this point i've interacted with a lot a lot of those folks there and it's uh, a wonderful group of people there uh i think there's a about seven people that kind of that's a weekly ch- uh twitter chat uh which i probably 
could go into and explain that too, but uh, on, on Thursday evenings at 9 o'clock mm. uh, Eastern time, um, and they talk about and that's issues a way for, relevant to social work. And that's a way for people <laughs> all over, really, the world, right. uh, you know, to connect in one place on Twitter to discuss topics of, of a topic of an interest and right. be able to share resources, knowledge, yeah. um, opinions, uh, which is really a, a really great way to use Twitter and to connect yes. with people who you might never have had a chance to interact with um, in, in, without social media <laughs> absolutely yeah I mean I, I think that's that's the, the uh, you know one of the powerful things about Twitter is the tweet chats and then also uh, following conferences which is another thing I'm really into doing uh, following conference conference hashtags too mm -hmm. but um, but yeah it's a great way to connect with people uh, so Twitter chats are kind of a, a, um, a set amount of time usually an hour mm -hmm. uh, allotted and you pick a hashtag and somebody usually picks a topic uh, and not always a blog associated with a tweet chat but the two that I'm most active in is the the macro social work and the and the suicide prevention one um, and there's also a healthcare leadership one too and they have a, a blog too so and they just kind of preset you what questions they're going to ask and things like that so well it seems like a really great way to to network and yes. to get to know get to know individuals in the social work profession get mm -hmm. to share knowledge um now what are some ways that individuals let's say you're a social work student what are some ways that we they could find out more about twitter chats or if they you know a lot of people want to build their resume or build connections right what are some ways that they can if they're new to twitter to connect with individuals? How do they find out? How do you find out? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, again, me, I've kind of just, <laughs> a lot of trial and error, I've stumbled on them. There's a lot, there's a couple of great uh, blog posts out there about kind of Twitter 101, Tweet Chat 101. I'm trying to think of one from the social work perspective that's really good is uh, uh, Laurel uh, Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. She's a, um, a, a social work professor. Mm -hmm. um, I met and her. Yeah, oh, very, yes, I met her at a, a conference. Yeah. Um, and I did see she has a pretty good how-to, yes. I think. Um, yeah. And I... I I'll figure out the name of it, and we'll get we'll get that out as yeah. sometime during the show. But I will yeah. find that out and be able to share that with uh, our listeners too. But is that one way you did find blogs? Yeah, yeah how to? Yep, there's one way, and then also uh, um, uh, Dora Lee, and I'm probably going to butcher her last name. Um, she's at Social Work Career. Um, she's kind of curated a list of relevant uh, social work chats. So um, uh, that's another thing we can probably, uh, you know, list on a follow up or something. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot of resources we can we can share. Definitely. There seems so. to definitely be. And um, so w you talked a little bit about is there any myths that people have? I know one thing that there's sometimes we think about social work and we think about social media. There's this sort of uh, as social workers, we should stay away from it. What All are right. some myths of, for, for social work that you've sort of encountered? Because you're a social worker jumping into social media, right. whereas other times people are like, no, not so much. Yeah. You should be separate. I don't want to have a social media presence. I don't want clients to be able to know where I am or to find me uh, uh, online. What are yeah. some, how do you sort of debunk some of those things or say like, no, here's the benefits yeah. of social media. Here's okay. how to do it safely. Okay. Uh, I mean, one, one of the things that, that, I mean, I can, I can share is that it seems like there's a lot of HIPAA kind of fears and I have uh, 24,000.3 tweets and 261 blog posts and not a HIPAA violation in any of them. <laughs> so there's ways to kind of tell stories and tell stories about your practice, tell stories about your agency without um, worrying about HIPAA. Uh, the biggest thing what you want to do is develop, and I have an example on my, my blog, is you want to develop a what's called a social media policy. <laughs> where you just kind of talk about, uh, and, and mine is on my page. <coughs> Pardon me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. So you, you have, you're sort of a policy for yourself. 
um, what do you, what do you want, sort of rules for you to, is your own guidelines before you're posting things? Okay, what's my, what do I want to cover? What do I want to stay away from? And sort right. of that sort of a, a guide for you. Yeah, it just kind of sp- specifically, you want to uh, put a policy out there that just specifically states kind of what you're, uh, and, it, uh, and if you go to, my blog, the Stuck on Social Work at WordPress.com, and there's a little thumbnail above there that says uh, Social Media Policy, and that's uh, that's mine. And it just kind of lays out kind of what can you expect from mm. from me, and if you're. Um, and I, I, there's two great examples that I that I put under there too, which is um, uh, Dr. Keely Combs. She's a psychologist out in California. She's kind of developed this kind of roadmap for social media policy, and then also um, uh, Dr. April Foreman. She's another one that that kind of helped. So I kind of merged the two, and then some of my own content that's that's unique and. That can kind of just spell out, you know, if if uh, if, if you're a, a former client of mine, that's looking at it, like what can you expect from me? Um, just kind of the goals. I you, you put I put in there that really this isn't a crisis counseling site, um, but I do list if you are in crisis places you can go. Um, you know, and just kind of my goal is to just kind of share resources. I don't offer counseling. I'm not a replacement for counseling, but. This is what I do. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that seems really good. It's also sort of safe for you to say, like, this is not a counseling right. place. You definitely want to cover that, so individuals aren't trying to right. help themselves without getting the the professional, you know, help yeah. if they do need that. I just wanted to follow up um, from Laurel's blog where you said yeah. they have the how to um, how to do the Twitter chats. Um, if you search uh, teaching and learning and social work, that's the title of the blog, and the website is uh, Laurel Iverson Hitchcock. Dot org, so that's a really good uh, good place to find out sort of the step by step instructions yeah. on how to uh, be involved with the Twitter chats. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to sort of switch a little bit was we talked you talked a lot about language and how you that was one of the posts um, on your blog, but you also wrote an article with Jonathan Singer in the New Social Worker magazine yes. on language matters. It was a really great article. Yes, nice. um, I actually sh- shared it in one of my classes with my students, and it was really uh, popular as well. Because you made us think about really the language that we use in term in connection with suicide and suicide prevention. Can you just talk a little bit about that article um, mm-hmm. that was in the, I believe, fall edition, right, of the New Social Worker? Yes. Or- Okay. Yeah, I think along with you guys, right? Probably. probably <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, uh, well, first off, you know, to talk about kind of networking and meeting people you wouldn't meet, uh, you wouldn't normally meet. I had the chance to chat with uh, with Jonathan Singer, uh, who's an excellent uh, resource. He does uh, the Social Work Podcast, which is just a great, uh, great thing. Um, and so we kind of talked with him. It was actually after that, that, that uh, chat on borderline personality disorder um, and we were kind of going back and forth after and he said we should do something about this for social work and, and suicide and I said yes we should <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was fortunate enough to to be able to collaborate with him um, on that article so that was really fun to be able to uh, we did that via a, a, a Google uh, Google Doc which was kind of an interesting way of collaborating um, well, it was an excellent yeah. article. Yes, so, um. yeah. So you know, he and and, and you know, I, I made a lot of contributions, but uh, it, it was it was interesting. He sent out the he sent out the first draft, and uh, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I added a few things, <laughs> but for the most part, I was like, wow, this is an amazing article. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it, it was great to to go through that process and kind of think about. Okay. Um, one of the things that I feel really passionate about is that the the uh, the commit suicide um, versus we the the preferred language is die by suicide. Uh, commit makes you think it's like a crime, hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, so if you think about it, just try to catch yourself. Uh, <laughs> And you go into Same. a lot more details yes. of d- uh, all different words yeah. and terminologies that I never even would have thought of. It's like, oh my goodness! Now yes. it brings raises awareness to how we how we speak, um, and I think that's a really great article that 
sort of goes into detail mm-hmm. like here take the time to think about what you're saying and you even give a paragraph of what somebody says versus a second paragraph a revised paragraph of here's how these words could have been changed right so it's a really helpful tool and it's another way there was two things that I found from that one you connect with someone probably via social media to write an article or you connect it with someone about a topic um, and then you used another form of media which was an article and then you mm. share you know the new social worker which is written media and then you shared it on social media all as different ways to get your message out right so if we're talking about media in social work and how to use media for advocacy you really are sort of switching of being that person who is meeting one-on-one with clients individually to here's how i'm taking my topic i am being the media i'm engaging the media i'm using the media to get my message out for advocacy which is a pretty awesome thing for the social work profession yeah yeah. So, so where do you think this is heading? Where, do, where does the blog go next? And where do you see, you know, maybe down the line a little bit? What are the uh, sort of future, you know, dreams for it for you? Well, you know, I, I kind of uh, so as a result of all this, I've kind of gotten, you know, and, and I, I started out this way. I kind of had a little bit of a, a teaching training kind of kind of bug. So, um, you know, within there, I, you know, I, I still have my my full time job, which I love, but I put I put on there that I, that I'm I'm willing to, uh, you know, look at uh, consulting or uh, teaching and training about social media, and also just the, all those those therapeutic interests I have too um you know i've been branching out a little bit more as far as putting my my voice out there mm-hmm. this is a great example uh i've been on a guest on a, a, a another podcast the uh, get social health podcast which is an excellent podcast uh talking about healthcare and social media stuff um i've actually been exploring a little bit more uh, uh video too so um yeah, I'm just going to keep going and share, uh, continue to share resources on the blog. So, Well, I think it's really important, especially in the social work profession, where we need to, in my opinion, we need to be out there more. There's so mm. many misconceptions. Yes. Um, I saw... I, there's so many misconceptions about the social work profession that I see every day come in by people who aren't in the social work profession so as I see social workers trying to do you know creating blogs being on the radio which is might be out of a comfort zone um, doing different things using social media even signing up for a, a Twitter account taking that first step those are all ways that you're sort of going into this world of okay it's more than just me and my clients or me and me in this little area This is how we can reach larger groups of individuals, really see the public as client and say, here's how we can reach individuals who might never have considered seeing or using a social worker or really don't know what social worker even is or what we do. It's a really good way to get our message out there. Um, So I actually am really happy to hear that you're doing all this with the the Twitter chats, the, um, the blogging, writing articles for the new social worker, you know, talking about writing books, different yeah. things to get different ways and methods to use media to get our message out there about our profession and about topics, important topics like suicide prevention yes. and language and how we um, social work impacts us. <laughs> Yeah. So I'd like to uh, suggest that we take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You are listening to The Social Workers, and we have a special guest here. You've been listening to an interview with Sean Erger. We'll be back in just a moment here on The Social Workers. Hi, I'm Lisa Edelstein. Every day on set, I help my fictional doctors save the lives of imaginary patients in the TV series House. Every day in his village in Ethiopia, Barraka Ware helps save the lives of real children as a local health worker. Like many children in the developing world, the ones in Barraka's village are threatened by common illnesses that kill millions worldwide. But unlike villages without a local health worker, the children of Barraka's village get the care they need to survive. Imagine how many more children could be saved with your help. When you help local health workers like Barasa, you help children survive all over the world. (laughs) See where the good goes at goodgoes.org and find out all the ways you can help the good go further. Brought to you by Save the Children and the Ad Council. 
Welcome back to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. And welcome back. You have been listening to The Social Workers here on WCDB Albany. I'm your co-host, Eric Hardiman, here with Alyssa Lotmore, co-host. And our special guest this morning has been Sean Erriger, who's a social worker uh, and has been talking to us about social media, social work, new conceptions of how to use social media for the profession. And, Sean, we know you've, you've talked a little bit about some work you've done in the area of suicide prevention. Uh, wondering if we can shift the conversation and talk a little bit about that. What got you interested in that and sort of how has that... Um, become important in your work? Okay. Well, um, I've always been interested in, in suicide prevention, um, uh, just uh, personally and professionally. Uh, and when I started to explore kind of what was out there as I was forming my blog and just kind of networking with people, I, I ran into this uh, uh, Twitter chat uh, called the Suicide Prevention on Social Media. Uh, which was uh, hashtag SPSM, um, and their their blog is uh, SPSMchat.com. Um, and so I started participating in that, and that, that was founded by uh, Dr. April Foreman. Uh, she's a psychologist. Um, and uh, Tony Wood, who is he, he's a healthcare, uh, or not healthcare, I don't know what exactly, he does IT. Um, uh, information technology stuff and him and April were talking one day and I'm probably grossly underestimating uh, <laughs> simplifying the story but they were talking one day and and, and Tony was saying that uh, you know in, in, in information technology we we, uh, we blast things out on social media really quick and things really get picked up but in in mental health and suicide prevention not so much and uh, him and April said, well, let's, let's do that. <laughs> let's talk about, let's try to form a, a, a forum on social media to blast out information about suicide prevention, what's happening with suicide prevention, and how can we uh, get it out there. So um, that, that uh, tweet chat takes place um, every Sunday evening, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I've been participating in it since I started doing Twitter about a year and a half ago. Uh, then about six months ago, uh, they asked me if I wanted to... Uh, th there's a dedicated uh, Twitter account during the chat um, they do an interesting format they actually use a live Google Hangout hmm. at the same time that the chat is happening so it's kind of like uh, the, the Twitter chat is happening at the same time and you're also watching a video with, with a guest um, uh, so um, so they invited me to manage the the SPSM chat, which is just at SPSM chat on, on Twitter uh, during the chat. Um, so I, I do that. Um, and it's just a fantastic way to get information out. Um, and a really passionate group of, of people to network. That's how I met Jonathan Singer, so <laughs> uh, who I co-wrote that article for a new social worker with. So um, it really does seem like a great way to to connect. And like I said, some people can go on Twitter and just be more observers and follow right. chats without even having, um, you know, ever posting anything, whereas right. other people can be actively involved. Right. So I, one thing I do like about Twitter and social media is that you can have different roles, more of the observer role and find yeah. out information, and then also the active role where you are contributing um, mm -hmm. and, and adding information and, and sharing things. So I think there's, um, it helps with comfort levels of individuals and it's a way that everyone could be involved without actually having to be really involved right um, based on based on your comfort with social media so that's a really great way for p individuals to follow mm. facts on suicide uh, you know get information on suicide prevention and also engage in conversation and dialogue right 
Yeah, and they, they t- typically get uh, wonderful guests that kind of go to you know, the spectrum of people who have who are doing advocacy who have ex- experienced the suicide attempt. Uh, to uh, this past week, they had a, a data scientist who was looking at uh, Facebook data hmm. and connecting Facebook data to looking at uh, to a deeper understanding of depression and perhaps uh, you know kind of looking at prediction for suicide and kind of what uh, what, what are people posting about before an attempt and uh, things like that so that was really interesting so yeah they, they it runs the gamut so it's a great great place to to network to and get information so yeah. it's it's really amazing just to see the yeah. the transformation of how social media is impacting the social work profession today you know whether we like it or not um, I mean things are getting out there you, I mean we talk about suicide um, in let's like, take schools for example mm-hmm. stuff people students can find out before administrators even put a, a you know inform you know parents or you know the the schools or the school you know staff about something that might have happened so as we think about social media and the quick response and how anyone can put things out there it's really interesting to see how is this impacting the social work profession and the sort of um, typical process that we used to go through in terms of like say after a suicide uh, occurred how do we inform individuals when now we have to say okay social media is already informing individuals what is our response now how do we you know we don't have all you know that hour two hours or three hours to form a plan we have to have something immediate so it's definitely impacting uh the way social work even practices in in some settings yeah especially if you 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 work with with youth it's it's been interesting you know to to kind of hear uh kids talk about their their vines and the snapchats and the you know it's just like well actually i have some grasp of what you're talking about (laughs) so but um but yeah it's it's important though and information does travel quickly and it's about you know trying to make sure that the right information mm-hmm. is is getting out there and that is you know to make sure that it's accurate yeah. to make sure that it's you know it, it's it's vetted in in some way because mm-hmm. a lot of the times people people can put anything out on on social media mm-hmm. but you know social work i think has a real opportunity to put their stuff out in a way that, like you said, there's, that kind of takes away those those misconceptions and things like that. So, yeah. and as we're, I mean, we're running out of time, but as we wrap up, what are what value has social media added to your work? I mean, you you do so much. You have a you have a full time job. You do you know you're a licensed clinical social worker. You have a lot that you're balancing, and then you do all this. You're doing things on Twitter. You're blogging. You're writing articles. You're you know involved so much. How is what value has this social media added to your work? Because you wouldn't do it if it wasn't right. adding something. So what is right? You know, as as far as my my direct work as as a clinical case manager, I mean, really, it's it's how Helped me uh, feel feel more I- I- empowered. Um, it's interesting. The, the involvement in the macro social work community has has really kind of reminded me. I was kind of in that that clinical bubble for a while, you know, and, and to to remind me of the, the 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 more global thinking. And then also, just in terms of some of the direct resources that I found. Um, a lot of the the uh, some of the assessments that I've shared, some of the things that I've learned as far as uh, suicide prevention and assessments from suicide prevention and interventions and things like that have really added value to my, my direct practice in, in kind of inadvertently sharing it for other people. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you know I think that it, you know it, it, it adds the value of, uh, not only am I sharing these things, but I'm also kind of learning about them myself. So, yeah, I get the sense that the social media for you seems like what what I'm hearing from your words is that it's a way to integrate what you're doing in your work, what you've learned from your graduate education, and also what you're interested in personally, right. and trying to sort of interweave these things together into one uh, identity, who you are and kind of how you use social media to forward whatever message it is that you're most interested in at that time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's also interesting. I noticed on your on your blog you have a post about the grand challenges for social work, yes, which yeah. is kind of a newer way of thinking, a newer way of the social work research community and the social work profession at large. Um, focusing our attention as a profession and trying to figure out, you know, because we are a profession in social work that does so much in so many different areas that sometimes things get diffused and sometimes the impact gets spread so thinly that it can be difficult to uh, to focus energy. So uh, I wonder if you have any thoughts about that, about maybe how technology might help the profession kind of focus mm. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the grand challenges thing is was was excellent, and I, I and I I was especially moved because I'm really interested in, like I said, that I, I've, it started out with an interest of the 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 integration of healthcare and behavioral health, and I really started to get interested in in healthcare and and technology. And from the social work perspective, uh, there, there was that grand challenge of using technology for good. <laughs> um, and somebody wrote, uh, Jonathan Singer, actually, he, wrote, he was one of the co-authors of the one that, that I blogged about. Uh, which was the uh, kind of the implications of of uh, technology for direct practice as as a challenge, and then also, so another person wrote uh, I forget the author of that one, uh, co-authors uh, wrote one about the use of big data mm-hmm. and and social work, um, you know, which I think is an interesting concept. Um, but as, uh, my, my interest is really how can, as, as a care coordinator, how can technology kind of move and connect people quickly? Um, and I think there's a lot of health information technology, and I've been trying to uh, highlight that on my blog, especially the last few months. I've ran into some really cool technology that's trying to connect uh, people with, uh, you know, the... the the consumers with the providers in quick ways via, via texting, video, things like that. Um, and there's a lot of stuff out there like that. So I think that uh, technology for social work, and I know that there's a lot of interest too in, in terms of social welfare uh, and child welfare, how can we use technology mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, kind of speed care up and communication and I think that social work can play a huge role in in that too and being active in that well, it seems like that. I mean, you've provided us today with so much information, um, and I'm sure more will be on your blog. Um, again, the blo- your your blog is uh, www.stuckonsocialwork.wordpress.com, and people can also follow you on Twitter um, at stuckonsw. So, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Again, we were here with um, Sean Erger. And he is a mental health care manager, a blogger, a consultant. He had eleven. You have eleven years of practice experience, um, but you're still using social media and different forms of media to get your message out there. And I want to thank you for being on our guest on our show today. All right, thanks for having me. It was great. Thank, and, thanks, Sean. We enjoyed it. Yeah.